Our partners at Bet Online continue to be your number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including this year's Wimbledon Finals, Major League Baseball, all the latest fighting news, and this season's NFL. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today. Receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code BLEAV to get the bonus and get into action. Bet online where the game starts. Hello, hello, hello. It's Private Talk Podcast with Alexis Texas, and we are back season four. And today, Private Talk, we have the pleasure of having Keith Barry on the couch. Hello, and welcome to Private Talk. I'm excited to get to know you a little bit better. Yes. Please introduce yourself to Private Talk. Well, my name is Keith Barry, and basically this is our first time meeting. So yes, happy to be here. Exciting. Yeah, it's very exciting. I'm an MMA fighter and also NFT enthusiast. Love it. Yes, yes. Um, big in digital marketing, all that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, it feels weird talking about myself. I'm a big stoner, really into the weed industry and cannabis. So I love that. Luckily, you know, well, hopefully you smoke before because unfortunately we can't smoke this time in the I podcast room, but normally we do. So, oh, you know, okay. that's normally our thing. But, you know, this season we're moving around a little bit, so we have to respect other people's rules. But yeah. I would have been sharing, a, you know, a joint with you, blend, whatever in your preference. Mm-hmm. Joints for sure. Joints, joints, yeah. man. Yeah. So have you always been into the cannabis area? Is it something that you just recently got into? It was probably right before COVID, probably 2019. It was actually funny. A friend from high school, he was like, hey, man, a guy that never smokes, kind of like what they call a chad. Okay, what is a chad? A chad is like, uh, it's a person that's coming into the weed industry that doesn't really feel familiar with the culture of weed. Okay. But they're coming in kind of for the money, right? Okay. Uh, just to kind of make a profit. So he was kind of a chad in high school, never smoked, didn't know anything about the weed culture, brought me on as like a sales manager. And um, yeah, I learned from 2019 to probably 2022 about and um yeah i learned a lot in the cannabis industry and being a stoner it was like a lot of fun i was definitely the test dummy mm-hmm. and the guinea pig for a lot of situations I'm sure that was fun oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of high nights very very i mean the body is crazy because cannabis i didn't know that you could absorb it through your skin mm-hmm. i mean I, I guess if i really thought about it you can you could absorb other things through your skin but i've i've gotten a couple high a couple times the from chemists, topicals? Yeah. yeah. Okay. The, the chemist would be like, okay, don't touch this. I Seriously. Almost like daring me to, you know? And you're like, what, this? I'm like, I'm just going <laughs> to get really high if I touch this. <laughs> so I would do it. And then, um, yeah, I ended up just like comatose on the ground. Like, I can't even explain it. You Out know? of it. Yeah. And the whole time thinking I'm going to die. But I know that you're not going to die. It's yeah. just like a thing, a really over annoyed. Or the overly paranoid. Paranoia. Yes. So I survived. So do you think that, you know, you having a, a fighting background, do you think that it the benefits of CBD and THC is beneficial in that area as well? Or do you think that, you know, the drug testing for that is should be in protocol? Or do you think that it should be lifted? No, it's um, the World Doping Agency and also California State Athletic Commission, Nevada State Athletic Commission, all the big commissions. CBD is totally legal. Okay. Even THC in California and Nevada. But you can only have a certain amount of metabolites. So basically, you just can't smoke right before the fight. Okay. You can't be high during the fight. They don't want that. But they, they're all for it, for you know recovery, for just... Um, Was it know. something in your regimen that while you were fighting? Yeah. That you practice? Yeah. yeah. Smoking weed? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Cause because some people before, back then, you know, it was like very taboo to, you know, to admit to those things. Mm-hmm. But again, like more and more of the rules are being lifted and being, yeah. you know, the seeing the effects of, from even like the positive sides of your body and the recovery things, mm-hmm. you know, so it's like, was it something that you, you know, being the pothead stoner that you were before, is it something that you already dabbled in so you knew that those things and you just kind of did it yourself? Yeah. Yeah. I, um... I think it's, I got some injuries over time when I was like, I'm 35 now, so about 10 years ago when I was like really actively fighting, I got some injuries and uh, they would always prescribe me like pain medicine and stuff, but that like during when you're training for fights, it makes you like constipated, all these different things, it fucks with your hormones, so I, I was kind of against it and then I had a kind of scare with weed when I was young and I didn't want to mess with it, but then I came back to it, I'm like, you know what, let me try an edible, let me um, test the waters. And uh, yeah, I started liking it. <clears throat> is it something that you have in your everyday life now? Is yeah. Or you do. So how many times do you, do you more smoke things or do you are you an edible person? Or the topicals? 
No, I do. So I have a CBD cream that, so Elite Garden is my company, Elite Garden CBD. And uh, so I use, they have like a, I got to give you some. It's like a Tiger okay. Balm and like any bumps, bruises, way better than Advil, anything like pain relief. Yeah. But it'll really help. Like, so like whenever I have something that's bothering my low back, sometimes bugs me or something with my legs, then that's like the perfect thing to use. Awesome. But I still, I smoke cannabis daily. You All know, right. I smoke out of a bong. And I also smoke drinks. Old school. Yeah, okay. Yeah. okay. Okay. Well, I do these spaces and friends, friends who see me on the spaces, I take a bong rip. People in crypto and NFTs love weed. Mm -hmm. So like when I came in the NFT industry, they were like, oh, we love this guy. Accepting, He's yeah. He's a fighter. He likes weed, likes crypto. Like, Yeah. I feel like in a sense, they kind of go hand in hand. It's one of those things, when th things that are so complex or whatever, you uh -huh. need something to kind of like, you know, just ease yourself into it. Like myself is like, I have high anxiety, but I don't, something that likes to take pills or anything like that. Mm. So I've, I've smoked weed throughout my career so it's, it's like because natural, it's just right? i can control when i um, want to stop you know do things and then as things advance more in time like you said like the topical things when i danced in those things at mm -hmm. the time i would use those for my body and it was just such like a pleasure to have not to take a bunch of ibuprofen or yeah. all these things that really kind of just like muted the situation but didn't help the situation yeah. so i think that it's really cool more people like yourself are getting you know all these companies from cbd and kind of really mm -hmm. tapping into the educational part of it and also like showing that you can have athletes have it and yeah. uh, everyday people have it and mm -hmm. you know nowadays you know in vegas we had this show sponsored or my podcast sponsored in vegas in january and they talked about the whole like educational purpose that where it's like even elderly people every like there they have a bus from the senior citizen uh, thing mm -hmm. every week they come by and get their medicine. Yeah. So it's like you know just it just helps. So I mm -hmm. feel like you know it's just weed. Let's all smoke it. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. Forge, I'm sad we can't smoke together. We'll just have to <laughs> do that after another time for sure. Yes. But I'm definitely just like super bullish on weed. I just think it's good in so many different ways. I think just think there's a big stigma. Mm. When I was younger, like my dad smoked weed and he's kind of a drunk. So I was like, oh, I never want to smoke. It's horrible. So I thought that for most of my life. And then, like oh, I said, when I was like 25, I started messing with the edibles and smoking. And I thought, oh my God, like I almost felt like somebody was hiding it from me. Mm. And it was like this natural pain relief and even like happy medicine because I smoke it to watch movies, to train, pretty much everything I do. So you know your regimen of like the sativa, the hybrid, mm -hmm. the indica, or do you smoke, what strand do you smoke more heavily well, than others? I'm such a heavy smoker that I smoke a lot of indica. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, but not like, I don't like hazes or glues mm. because kind of make you like... Stuck. Yeah. Hence but, the names. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's like certain cushions that I like a lot, okay. if that makes sense. Like yeah. cush will bring you up and... By the time my workout's done, I'm crashing. It's fine. I could take a nap. nap. You know? Okay. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Describe something that's exciting in your life right now. Describe something that's exciting. I just moved to Vegas. Okay. So um, I've kind of fought in and out of Vegas since like 2009. So I know the town well. I have a lot of fighter friends there. It's like a healthy lifestyle for me. Okay. I don't drink at all, so I just smoke. And uh, there's weed 24 hours a day everywhere in Vegas. It's crazy because Vegas used to be like, no weed mm -hmm. like we're totally against it we're gonna throw you in the jail like nothing no i've definitely tolerance. been kicked out of some places because of weed smoking now it's like acceptable i smoke my pen all throughout the casinos on the streets yeah like, cops pull me over i'm speeding and they say your weed your car smells like weed watch that they just say watch that mm. and they let me go uh it's just it's different how is that how does that feel coming from an era when that before it wasn't so like accepting where it's like if the cops pulled you over you could go like what is that feeling now do you feel like you're still getting in trouble like oh like you did something bad or do you just like eh, that's, that's what it is what it is i think i'm pretty chill with it but still like if i get it doesn't ruin your high at the time because you're like oh shit yeah yeah for sure <laughs> smoke more until you leave it does <laughs> afterwards i smoked a bunch i recently got pulled over just from like i was like speeding i changed lanes real quick the cop was so nice though in Vegas. He literally gave okay. me a warning and like mentioned something about martial arts. He saw my ear or something. He's like, oh, you do martial arts? And then I was like, wow, this is like the best cop interaction I've ever had. Nice. So, so Vegas, where it's at for you. It's, all, it's yeah. all working out well. Yeah, it's working out well. But I love California. I grew up here. Um, I used to live right next to Sean in, in Orange County. Okay. My best friend, Sean, over there. Nice. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. What would you say is unique about you? What's unique about me? Mm. 
That's interesting. I, I get stumped with these like self questions where I have to like think about. My well, you own. said you earlier you didn't like talking about yourself, but you know this Miss Texas is gonna get you know dig know, in a little gonna... bit deeper. You know, you said that we didn't know each other. That's why it's called private talk because at the end of this we're gonna get to know each other a little bit more. Even, okay. Yes. It's gonna go so, deeper. Go deeper. You know, and nothing's wrong with going deeper. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, it could be anything from you know your personality to you know what you bring to the fighting world. What you, you know anything. I would say what stands out. I really started. Um, I don't know. I'm still training a lot myself and focusing on my own fights and stuff. But I've taken a little bit of a backseat. Being in Vegas, I can manage fighters mm. and uh, just trying to like. I'm 35 now. I keep saying that, but like when I started fighting, I was 18. Mm. So I've learned a lot in the MMA industry, and I've learned a lot in the fight game. So I feel like I have a lot of knowledge to pass to younger guys, and just like keep people on on point because a lot of fighters like. It's a it's a real individual sport, mm -hmm. but then it has to be a team sport too. Because you need your coach, you need your weight guy, you need people to kind of check up on you. Like, are you on weight? Are you training enough? Do you need to train a little less? Are you holding them injuries? accountable. Mm -hmm. Just kind of, yeah, holding them accountable and also being there to like support them. So so more uh, of like the mentor role. Yeah, with but, all the knowledge, but managing too. So okay. I'm trying to get them sponsors and then trying to get them fights. And um, yeah. do you have a fight coming up yourself that you're training for, or are you just kind of primarily managing people right now? I'm just managing people. Yeah, right. I kind of focus on that. At the end of the year, I've been doing a lot of Muay Thai. I'm like real obsessed with that right now. Okay. So I've been just enjoying that. I went to Tulum for a couple of weeks and I was training down there. Nice. And then uh, I was training in LA here for a little bit, and I obviously train a lot in Vegas. So I think an interesting thing about me right now is I'm managing professional fighters. Nice. So, yeah. It's like being in with the fights without having to be the actual fighter right? i love that though i think that like you said you know it is such an individual sport but a lot of people like try to like hold on to like their secrets or their gems mm. and stuff where it's like i think the more progression of like being more in depth in the field is like sharing your knowledge of what you know and they can add to themselves as well yeah yeah it's both it's a team and an individual sport and i think guys just think it's a team sport it's me versus you know, this, but it is a team sport because mm -hmm. you need all oh, you need your guys there. You know, you need you need your your people for you. You know, moral support plus sure. training. People have your back. And, yeah. Is there anything that you regret saying no to that you could go back and maybe say yes? Like in the fight game or life in general? In life in general. It could be with the fighting. It could be life. It could be anything. Um, I think if I had to say no to something, I would have said no to college. You would have said no to college? Yeah, I think I wasted time. I went to Northridge here in uh, Cal State Northridge over in CSUN, so like the valley. But um, I think if I would have just focused on fighting, I would have been in a way different spot versus kind of like trying to do college and then trying to fight and then kind of juggling that. What were you going to school for? Uh, nursing. Nursing? Mm -hmm. Do you have a passion in that any longer? Would you ever go back and kind of dabble again? Or are you... Mm, I, I like... I like to take care of people and stuff, and that's what that's what it was about. When I was younger, I got in a lot of street fights and I got stabbed. So the the male nurse that like sewed me up and we mm. had this talk, you know, I was only 15, and he was like, "Yeah, I'm a male a nurse," impact. and he was like buff, and he's like, "I work out a lot and I travel and uh, I get paid a lot." So that was my first thought. I'm like, "All right, that's what I want to do. I'll just be like a fighter, traveling male nurse guy." And then okay. he's like, "Oh, there's tons of ladies because you'll be the only male." And there was a lot of perks to it when I was younger. I was like, "All right, this sounds like the game." But, uh, but yeah, I actually, fighting was more like my passion, passion. I should have just kind of, your parents yeah. and your family are like, oh, college, college. But I kind of wish I just went. Right into fighting? Yeah. yeah. But, With you yeah. being in fighting and now, you know, doing all kind of different walks of life, you said you travel a lot. Mm -hmm. Has there been any crazy fan interactions or maybe celebrity interactions that you just kind of didn't think that would go that way? Um, I had, I had a kind of a crazy like weird stalker from um web three which is like twitter and mm -hmm. stuff and um yeah just some girl that was just like wanted to be me and i met her and then I like how you're so you got really quiet talking like i hope she's not watching me right this yeah time. she's like <laughs> where is she in the corner i promise you she's not here she <laughs> she knew a lot of these web three people and she was in a lot of these groups of mine and then uh yeah when i didn't want to hang out with her one night or something i was busy she like freaked out it was a whole thing you know, I don't want And you still never met her? No, I did meet her. Oh, it was after so you, I met her. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, um, you know, you meet a lot, or you don't meet them, but you talk to a lot of people on the internet, and um, I just try to be as nice as I can to everyone, and then some people, they take it, like, 
the niceness too much too far know? yeah or it's so, like you can only just you could just be a nice guy without trying to want to fuck or be in a relationship yeah, or do yeah. any of those things yeah she was like a 45 year old woman you know and uh, not really my type it just I don't know it just was, it was just, kind of weird just bad news thing. yeah bad news mm-hmm. did it make you in some sort flailed flattered because someone was like wanting you or crushing that hard to like get your attention because there's like that gray area between mm-hmm. like oh it's cute and they're like oh it's scary yeah <laughs> no it was only scary only scary yeah okay horrible because, experience yeah because she knew a lot of people that I knew and then I didn't want to like talk crap on her but I had to tell him like look this girl freaked out like, mm-hmm yeah, it's not good, guys. Not good. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I didn't want to say too much either because I know people just love to talk. Talk, yeah. So I just like. Oh, and then no. you're the bad guy. Yeah. I mean, nobody wants that. Exactly. So with the crazy lifestyle that you live and trying to, you know, being with managing people, do you have any daily rituals or go-to strategies that kind of like keep you in line with being on top of what you're doing? Uh, daily rituals. I meditate and do yoga every morning. Okay. So I listen to like positive affirmations and stuff like that i heard something from somebody that when you first wake up your your brain's in like a beta mode where you absorb the most information so i try to listen to like really positive things and like do something like i'm always training so much so yoga is always like okay like a start up for the day you know so you're so. you're lim- you're limber get str- str- <laughs> i'm doing my best i'm doing my best can you do the splits no do you think you'll ever get there maybe maybe i haven't actually been like working that but like, maybe you should right. <laughs> you learned something I'm new. more flexible than people think though when i do jiu-jitsu and i do different things so okay i surprise people surprise them yeah dating life what is that like are you single in a relationship looking dating life single, single? um i've been moving around so much and traveling so much it's hard to like like latch down with something but even before i mean um i was traveling a lot the last year before this for nft stuff and going all over the place so um yeah i've I've met a couple girls and dated a little bit but it just hasn't worked out so with your dating life is it something when you how do you meet people is it something like dating apps are you on or do you just try to typically do it organically like going out to these events that you're doing or how do you kind of approach that like with meeting people i found it's best to meet somebody from friends okay you know to like me like you're so going like out somebody out a little bit or get to yeah. know a little bit of, about them first mm, like I don't know it just seems more of a safer space too like kind of random people on dating websites i've done the dating websites and they're just not they're it just, yeah is just it more it. we find like more of a hookup thing or is it just like just the caliber of people just isn't it um probably both you know a little bit of both and uh i just think it i don't know it's like it's not i don't know it's not natural for me you know okay it's like uh I'd rather like know the people and like know the people they hang around with so I have an idea of who they are as a person. Okay. You know, and then uh kinda go from there. Would you say that you're the type of man that if you were at a bar and you saw something that saw a woman that you were interested, would you wait till she approached you or would you approach her? What attack method would you use? I don't think women ever approach men, do they? They do. They do. They okay. do. It's, it hasn't happened you're, you, times. Especially Europe too. But I feel like nowadays, oh, like Europe, you know, okay. I feel like mm-hmm. nowadays the kind of not roles of reverse but i feel like there's a lot more women are asking for what they want or going after what they go you know what they want kind of thing so it's Mm. like i feel it can go either way um Mm. i don't think it's like one gender neutral way that's like not always the man should approach yeah or does so it hasn't happened to you yeah no no i usually just approach but i'm not because you seem kind of timid about it so it seems like you'd be like oh like you'd maybe make sean go do it but you wouldn't go do it (laughs) that's happened a lot that's happened a lot i feel like you'd be like hey i think she's really hot can we like do something but i feel like you're kind of like sometimes sean fucks it up though does sean fuck it up (laughs) sometimes so you know it's better sometimes to do it myself do you have like a go-to pickup line no what works i for just you? try to like ask their name and say hi and okay like, what are you doing here just so the typical small stuff small yeah. talk like a nice yeah. guy gentleman yeah. like where are we going from here yeah i'm so the nice guy would you fuck on a first date depends you have you looked yeah. away <laughs> i have i have i'm not gonna lie but There's nothing uh, wrong with that yeah it doesn't happen much actually anymore okay i feel like i'm old now you know what i mean like you're 35 I relax i don't go out though and i don't it's hard but to that's like, why i feel like i say like where do you approach women yeah. you know what i mean because like my i'm 38 so it's like the last two years like i well actually let's say last year i've been like open to dating but myself too is like i can't really go on dating apps because people know who i am and then yeah. it's that whole like weeding things out but it's like where do you go and find people you have to put yourself out there no one's gonna go knocking down on your gym door and say hey yeah. come and do it you know what i mean as much as if anybody's as yeah. alpha or whatever but it's like 
your hobbies, what you like, but also being open to speaking to other people than the people that you came there with. Mm. Because I feel like I myself have been like, yeah, but I'm out, but I'm not paying attention to who's out. Mm. I'm just paying attention to my group. So I could see why you say like, with friends, me knowing friends and introducing you, but you should like open yourself up to. You're in Vegas, you're not old. So you yeah, there's lots right. of experiences in Vegas there's, that you can do from not just yeah. like typical like casinos or things, mm. but there's other stuff that I feel like if you tried a little bit more, maybe. You're, you're right you're Maybe right i thought that to myself i'm like i really don't try because i don't go out i'm like this people is, invite me out sometimes i'm like ah yeah so no one's like, gonna come to knocking down your door yeah. you know and that's the stalker type and then we don't want those types we talked about that see the thing i am i am a little shy and timid sometimes with okay. girls so the thing about me through my whole like dating career people have always like just like oh this is keith oh this okay. is kind of introduced me to people or i've already known people so it's kind of been like easier for me. So now the but last that's couple the years, easy way out. Keith. Yeah, I know, but it's been so. Doctor nice. Texas is going to teach you the way. I'm um, Doctor <laughs> Texas without the PhD. Let's gotta, just put I that out the disclaimer out there. But I mean, it's. I feel like, for me, and you should just food for thought. It's that, it's the year of like being uncomfortable or like being comfortable. Like you have to be. Un you have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable, mm -hmm. because if not, you're going to stay the same course. You're going to do yeah. the same things, and nothing's ever going to change. And doing mm -hmm. the same thing over and over again and expecting different results is what insanity. <laughs> so therefore, you got to you know do a little bit more, Keith. Yes. You know yes, you want you know you right. want a wife. You know you want right. you know a children. You want all these things that you know aspire to add on these <laughs> life. I mean, are those not things that you want? A wife? Oh, it's kind of like a complicated thing nowadays. Do I want a wife? I don't know. I'm asking and you. Kids? Do I? I don't know. I'm asking myself right now. Uh, reflect, Keith. Reflect. Do you want a wife? Do you want a companion and a partner to share all the great things that you're doing in life? It sounds good, but like I don't know. Nowadays, it's I'm big on trust too. That's why when I'm already already meet somebody, I kind of already trust them in a way because I knew them from this person. This person's legit. But that's the trust on them, not your trust yeah right. so the trust holds weight with you mm -hmm. so it's like you have to determine i think that maybe part of some of your timidness is things that you haven't asked yourself these questions but it's like if you do want those things if you know i don't know if you do or not but it's opening yourself up to like what does a relationship work for me i think when people get timid it's like they see reflections of other people and i think that a lot of people nowadays kind of settle and mm -hmm. so they like yeah, don't have to settle. get married i'd rather and, be alone you know or they're married like, and they're like we don't have sex for a year or we don't have whatever it's like why would you want a relationship like that so it's like sometimes what we project is like we're putting that in the air and that's what we get back but if you're really honest with yourself and you say hey i need a partner who's supportive someone who's going to like uplift me or be there for me a b c d and then it's like then you have more of a clear line and direction of who those ladies would be yeah i think it's for me it's like I do, I do all these things and I want the, the person I'm with to be like active and hiking and, do, and so it's when I go to bars like those are not the people that I meet right but They're those like, aren't the places you should meet somebody I know, I know. but those are like where else do you it's like in Vegas, where do you meet? Like, the grocery store, freaking yeah, the yeah. gas by chance of whatever. You know what I mean? Like, there's yeah. lots of places that if you keep the mindset. What about of the gym for not, you? Would you say because I, I would? Okay, I definitely had an encounter of someone. I wasn't personally at the gym, but a friend of mine hooked me up with someone that she saw at her gym that she thought would go in line with me, what okay. kind of thing. And it, it was a chance. You know what I mean? Mm. You don't know because we well, we're all about, strangers in a sense. But so that's say something you're working like. out at the gym and mm -hmm. you're doing cardio and like you see some guy and he kind of looks at you and then 10 minutes later he like comes up and talks and like maybe ask for your number is that too much at the gym so because people are that's like sometimes their their time to like you know they're at their work or doing all their things in life their gym is like their alone time their sacred but, space yeah, or whatever yeah. so i think it's it can go two ways i think that there's a time and a place so i feel like for me if i was on that machine or whatever and you're doing things mm -hmm. inappropriate time because i'm working out i'm getting whatever i'm doing on right but mm -hmm. if i was after getting off the machine and like I'm getting water, doing something that's like a stationary thing. I mean, like, hey, like, I think that you're really attractive. Like, I'm not trying to be too forward, but I would really like to take you out sometime. Is that something you'd be interested in? Mm -hmm. That I don't think is bad because again, you're in a place that both of y'all are at that y'all are actively doing. So you have common interests on certain levels. But if you don't ask, you'll never know. True. No, yeah, so now I just gave you your pickup line for the gym. Look, now you. <laughs> as you said that i thought that's a lot of words i don't know i'm gonna have to shorten that well and to your own context i know yeah. men sometimes you know are not as like complex as women like myself i just talk a lot so you know you just well, word you it can, down though, to you're, you're, you're a pretty woman talking to the guy so you could but nowadays i feel like there's a lot of pretty people out in the world so if you don't have substance behind those prettiness no, yeah, then what sure. that conversation gets 
deaded really quick. Mm-hmm. What would you say is one of your biggest pet peeves? Something that just really irritates you. Um, Don't say nothing because that's probably, a lot. <laughs> probably chewing with your mouth open. Okay, that's a big uh, one. Manners, like not having manners to like waiters and waitresses, mm. you know. Um, on your phone, like if we're we don't see each other a lot or something, and then we're in front of each other, and you're just on your phone the whole time. It's a little annoying. Okay. Yeah. Fair. Yeah. Who is your first celebrity crush? Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson. Oh, I mean a girl. <laughs> I mean, if you want to have girl. a Mike is your... <laughs> okay. Um, girl. Oh, I don't know. You have to know. You so knew Mike much. really quick. You could... <laughs> I know. I, I was ready for that. Um, you didn't have some girl that you maybe... Maybe she was a Victoria's Secret model. Maybe like Denise Richards or okay. something. Okay. Okay. I like that. What was the movie that she was in that was... Um, like Wild Things? Yeah, see, you knew. Oh, you knew wow. real quick. Yeah. <laughs> things got real wild <laughs> over there. How many it times did you watch that movie? I don't know. At least 100 times. I've mm-hmm. seen it, yeah. Did you watch it in slow-mo? I've seen it in all modes. I like it. Yeah. What would you say is the best advice that you've ever gotten? Hmm, that's a good question. What's the best advice that I've ever gotten? Um... Do you take advice from other people? It sounds like I don't. Do you Google for advice? <laughs> We've had that answer before. You, they Google for it? Sometimes. Maybe you have a mentor. Maybe it's Mike. Maybe it's, you know, who, I mean, there's a lot that could come from anywhere. Or maybe you just go to yourself and you don't feel like you need advice, whatever, and you just kind of look within and kind of maybe figure it out yourself because we do have the answers. Yeah, I think I think my coach, Jamie, he's telling me a lot of things. I have a boxing coach. He's actually in Vegas, too. He has two kids. So I, I try to be close with him and his kids. And I've known him since, like, him and his wife got together before I even had kids. So, like, I don't know. I've seen him Growth. grow a lot. Yeah. yeah. So he's given me a lot of good advice. Um, it's more, like, straightforward advice before fights and stuff. Okay. Like, don't mess with this person. Don't do this. And... Um, but I can't remember like specific yeah. advice that was really good. But uh, yeah, I've definitely taken a lot of advice from him. Okay. And uh, yeah, yeah. If you could change jobs, would you? And what would you do? I don't think I would change jobs. But if I randomly could do any job, I'd be like a Lamborghini <laughs> salesman. Okay. Lamborghini salesman. In Italy. Mm, that, that matters. That matters. That matters. Like I'd be at the... like. Lamborghini like headquarters, you know. Mm. So you're a top dog Lamborghini in Italy. Yeah, not just like a normal. Not just a n- normal. You're like salesman of the year. Yeah, and like you get free Lambos too. Okay, I like this. Okay, yeah. I think we just invented our own. <laughs> yeah. Show. One Lambo a year. <laughs> Have you ever been kicked out of a place? And if so, why? I've been kicked out of places in Vegas. What did you do? Were you too drunk? Were yeah. you fighting? Where were you? Uh, I think I was just too drunk. I tripped over something, and the bar t- or the bouncer was like, "Nah, dude." That's like, it. Oh. When and done. You gotta yeah, get out of here. I think that was really it. I mean, I've had a couple incidents like that. Maybe. Okay. I can't, I can't think specifically. I'm trying With- not to incriminate <clears throat> myself too much. With all the social media platforms out there, which one do you use the most, if any? Twitter. Twitter. So you're part of the whole X movement. Yeah. Yeah. Like At it. first, I didn't like. I was like, "What is this X?" Like, what? But. Kind of it's growing, it's on, growing me. on you. Yeah, yeah. So you speak about that a little bit more. You say you do Twitter, you do spaces on there. You're yeah. heavily into NFT stuff now. Yeah. What kind of stuff would we be able to find on? Like you're doing a Twitter space with you. So I focus more on like on smaller artists and people that are getting into NFTs. Like, so say say so say you're an artist and you're making all these like drawings and paintings, and then you vector it and you put it online and you can mint it on a blockchain and they sell it from there. Okay. So. I try to help people that are first getting in, and then I'm just trying to be like an uplifting, positive person. And so, are they luxury. asking questions to you on this on the on, when you're doing your space, if sort of that way, like one on one kind of thing? So, like I'm, I'm a like a setting? big collector. So, like almost like my niche, I'm always like buying NFTs, talking about NFTs. So, I kind of like am true to that. So, I'll open up spaces and I'll buy art from people like all over the world, like people place in Africa, place in Europe, place in Australia, just all over, you know, and just support smaller artists a lot of them are women Mm -hmm. which is nice because i have like a big women following but Mm -hmm. they're all like artists you know and uh 
Yeah. How did yeah. you kind of fall into the NFT space? You know, it's something that's, you know, new to certain people. Mm-hmm. It's been around for a while, but, you know, really in the depths of it, how did you kind of get into that world and how? At first I was into Dogecoin. So my friend told me, oh, get into Dogecoin, check this out. It's like a funny dog coin, you know, it's just fun. And I kind of just did it messing around with him and like buying a hundred dollars, kind of like acting like we're just throwing away a hundred dollars. And then um, after a while it started kind of going up and then I started getting more into Twitter. Mm. Almost like it was like a Dogecoin community. They have like different sub communities on Twitter, all kinds, right? I don't know how many different communities there are, but there's probably hundreds, you know? So kind of got into that and then from Dogecoin went into NFTs and then thought like, I'm just going to buy a bunch of NFTs and be in this crowd. People were really like supportive and they were looking at my fights again. So it was kind of like revitalizing my fight career again. And um, yeah, it was just fun. You know, it was like a good positive support system. I would just train all day and then talk on spaces and mess around on Twitter and smoke your bong. Yeah. Do that. Get it doing again. Yeah. What would you say is your most memorable fight? Most memorable fight. I fought this guy, Cortez Coleman for Bellator. And uh, it was in 2013, and it was his hometown. And uh, at the time, he was training with this guy that like had some beef with my ex. So there's mm-hmm. like all this drama, and um, yeah. like drama beef, like how what's going on with like you know like his Dylan Dennis partner. and Logan Paul like talking shit about each other like in that realm, or no, it was like more more low key. It wasn't okay. like that crazy, but uh, yeah, I went to like a it was like a crazy fight like. I was trying to knock the guy out the whole time. So you won naturally. Really close. Yeah, I won. But okay. it was a split decision in his hometown. And uh, it was like a viral video on the internet. It had all these views. So that was like my best, best fight. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, and I got other bigger contracts because of that fight. And, yeah. Notoriety. Mm-hmm. What do you think about the whole madness of Dylan Dennis and whole Logan Paul fight coming up and how much shit that's being talked about, you know, personal stuff and mm-hmm. all kinds of craziness? Do you think that takes away from the sport or do you think it's an added bonus and that's just how it goes? I think it's weird. Okay. Yeah. Something you wouldn't do yourself? No, no. I don't understand why they're involving the girls and doing this whole thing. I think it's like maybe it gets more publicity. Mm. Maybe it's like their marketing click strategy bait, t- yeah click bait, i guess type of thing yeah um but i don't know if like hardcore fan that are into fighting really like vibe with that i don't know with the, the, i was telling my friend today i was like i don't know why dylan danis is going so hard on this i know him a little bit from vegas um i used to work at sapphire a strip club in vegas and um i've seen so many guys come in at that place so i saw him and um I, w- I was the front door guy so i just held his number and we talked a little bit He's kind of, I don't know, he's an okay guy, I guess. A little douchey, in yeah. my opinion. But um, this whole thing that they're doing, I don't know, if it makes for a big fight for them and more dollars, I guess it's good, but it's a little cringy. For like, sure. Why are you posting all these pictures of this girl and getting so into it and, and calling her a whore and all this stuff? It's mm-hmm. like, it's much. You yeah. Know? And uh, my focus would be on the guy, you know, and like not his, you know, who he's with. or. It's like, leave the wife and children alone. <laughs> Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. Yeah. So on the fight aspect, who do you think is going to win? Oh, they both really suck at <laughs> They both But suck. someone has to be a winner, so. One guy is a jiu-jitsu guy that's never really boxed, that is an actual fighter, but he's mostly jiu-jitsu, right? Mm-hmm. He fought for Bellator, where I just talked about. And then Logan Paul, I don't think he's ever won a fight in boxing. So he's 0-2-1. So he has two losses, one draw. No wins. So, I mean, this is like, these guys suck, right? I don't know. Like, these, I, don't, I don't know who to pick from, but I guess if I had to say, Logan will probably win because if it goes to decision, then I think he'll have, like, the judges in his pocket. In the pocket? Yeah. Okay, okay. In my opinion, I don't know. So you're going to go for Logan Paul? I don't like Logan. It's not about a liking card. It's just yeah. if, if somebody, like I said, there has to be a winner, mm-hmm. you know, or less, like, is it a draw? In five? There could be. It could be, but, but I feel I like that's it's not going to be that way. I no. feel like people would be really pissed if that's after all of this and that's yeah. what it gets to. Yeah. But yeah, it's interesting. I feel like, how do you feel about now with, you know, fighting world and things like there's more YouTubers and all these like, you know, social media stars coming in and kind of fighting. How do you kind of feel about that with someone who's kind of had more of a background that you've been doing it since, you know, younger and you kind of really took it serious where do you think that they are taking it serious as well? Or do you think they're trying to make a gimmick and joke of it? Mm, I think Jake Paul knows how to fight. 
and I'm actually like, I've seen him kind of grow. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh, this kid knows how to fight, you know? So him excluded the rest of the guys. I don't know. I'd like to fight a YouTube guy for a bunch of money. I mean, I think it's good for boxing because boxing was a little dead mm -hmm. and dying a little. People always say that it's dying. It, it'll probably never, ever go away. Obviously, boxing is like a century-old sport. It's a legendary sport. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just feel like I think that there's a lane for everybody. And like you said, I do think that Jake has definitely proven himself in like the training and bringing all those things. Mm -hmm. I think that now I think that for maybe some of the smaller ones, it's just become like a thing that's easier to do. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like, I mean, to each his own, if you can get inside the ring and go for battle, then to each his own. Yeah, I mean, Jake Paul is still getting in there. He's still like fighting all these rounds and having to go through the pre and all. There's a lot to go into yeah. fighting, you know? For him to do all that and have these performances like he has been, I mean, it's impressive. For, for sure. Like, yeah. Definitely has a lot of balls. Keep yeah. on going with all the, you know, the hate that he gets from sure. Mm -hmm. What's one luxury item that you spoil yourself with? Um, Is there something that you kind of indulge in? I buy a lot of Fiji water. Okay. So that's a luxury? <laughs> that's what I think. <laughs> okay. When I was poor, I only bought like the sh shitty water. Now I'm like okay. trying to buy only Fiji water. Sean likes Fiji water. All right, yeah. all right. To yeah. each his own. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what is the biggest life lesson that you've learned? Um, biggest life lesson. I think when you break up with somebody, I think that relationship should stay like almost dead. Uh, I think it's like raising zombies when you go back and date somebody that you've already dated. Because you've already like seen that. You've already found that out. And I've done that enough times where I'm like, all right, that is like a, a thing, a no-no for me. So it's kind of like my thing now they so. say it's like taking a shower and then putting dirty underwear on you don't want to do that like yeah. well, you've already been there done yeah. that you know time to I move on to the next pair people get like liking or involved or attached to these old memories they have mm -hmm. and they keep replaying them and then when they come back like you're it's like the both, dopamine they're chasing yeah it's just different it's, it, things have happened you both have changed a little and it's not always on the same page you know what personal accomplishment are you most proud of personal accomplishment that i'm most proud of I have uh, two of the fastest knockouts in California. That's awesome. So I have a five-second knockout and a six-second knockout. Did you go in there knowing that that's what you wanted to obtain? No, no. It's just something that you were just that awesome that fucking made it happen. When I was young and I was fighting, I just went in there balls blazing because I was scared. Because mm. I didn't, I wanted to get in there and win and didn't want to like, uh, I don't know. It was like more anxious for me. Now I've kind of like learned to hone my energy more and just more mature about it. So now I just whatever happens it doesn't matter how long it goes or how short it is so let's so. talk about that a little bit more what did you have any like pre-fight things that you did that was like on a daily like ritual thing not this meditation part but like right like before, before going fight. in the fight is there maybe some like a music a song a le like something that kind of made you like amped you up to get ready to go or do you just fuck it you just went and did it no i like i listen to music you know i just kind of zone out turn my phone off for the day focus on the fight I usually just repeat to myself, like, you did all your training, like, you're ready for this fight, and you have the skills to be this guy. And I, something like that. I have it, like, written down somewhere. Okay. But I, like, kind of repeat that to myself, because with fighting, you could go over scenarios, like, a thousand times. Like, this happens, this happens, what if this? So, your mind can get drained from that, I think. Yeah. So, I try to just, no, this is what I, I know these things, I've done all my training, uh, I, I have the tools to beat this guy, and I'm confident, so kind of repeat that to my I brainwash myself I like it yeah it works though <laughs> if people came with the warning label what would yours be um probably don't eat too much I'm an edible I don't know. <laughs> okay have you ever taken a souvenir home from a girl oh from a girl it could be panties it could be jewelry it could be oh like a girl you just meet a girl you had sex with that you just met and had sex with sure okay um <laughs> I don't think so. No? I did meet this girl. We didn't, like, have sex, but we, like, kissed at this bar in Hong Kong. And they had, like, these uh, Peter, pewter butterflies okay. all over this bar. It was a butterfly bar. And these little, like, metal pewter things. So I just took one of those for the memory. The memory? Yeah. Where is that? Do you have a keepsake box? I think, yeah, I think I gave it to my ex, actually. <laughs> I don't think you're supposed to free gift things. To I was like, this is from Hong Kong. It's really cool. But, That's yeah. hilarious. Yeah. Do you have any tattoos that you regret? I don't have any tattoos. No tattoos. What do you look for in a partner? I know this is a tough one for you. 
But do you know what you look for in a partner? Yeah, like somebody that's at least on the same page athletically, that likes to like, you know, exercise a lot and eat well, um, likes dogs. Okay. Likes cats. Do you have dogs? I have dogs. You have cats? I don't have cats, okay. but I like cats. Hot girls usually have cats, so I just mm. like the cats from that too. Not me. No? I don't like cats. No cats? No, no. Oh. I'm allergic and I feel like, you know, they're very shady. You never know when they're going to like pounce at you. Like dogs, I feel like a little bit more endearing to those things. Mm. Don't you know? yeah. Just my advice. My <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's see. I feel like we've warmed you up enough that I'm going to ask you a little bit more crazier questions. So oh things are about to get a little or spicy. Oh, boy. Are you ready? Okay, yeah. All right, right, let's. We'll, we'll ease you into it a little bit. How do you define cheating? What is cheating for you? I think when you're with somebody, you guys both like have a particular set of like what's not to do and what's to do you know so in a, say we're in a relationship mm. what are something that would be like your rules or like your that cheating that would consider cheating well we would probably have to talk about that like amongst each other right and be like oh it's but what are deal breakers too that <clears throat> would consider cheating i mean sex would be cheating okay. right? like a so job. physical like, yeah intimacy definitely and then i don't know i've the people that i've dated like if there's something going on usually we'll like talk it out and be like look all right we're just kind of like going other ways or it's not working out so i've had like a lot of like breakups that were really like amicable Mm -hmm. amicable amicable yeah Mm -hmm. uh so yeah it's a mouthful yeah it is a mouthful (laughs) but uh but yeah consider cheating i mean you guys would have to agree on where you're at in this relationship is completely exclusive and i mean there's this fighter sean o'malley have you heard of him Mm mm-hmm he just said randomly, he's like, I cheat on my wife because I pay all the bills and we have an open relationship. And I guess it's not cheating if he's, it's open, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah, but if I'm Would like, you be in an open relationship? No. No. I've not done for that you. before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not for you. No. Have you ever cheated? Yeah. Did you get caught? Yeah. How was that for you? Running around like a dirty dog, got caught. It is what it is, you know? You know? What excites you most about the future? I don't know. There's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of like, like this was exciting to come to LA, you know, because I've been in Vegas for the last couple months and I was just in Tulum. So I like traveling, a lot of the traveling coming up. And okay. there's an art Basel coming up in Miami that I'm excited for. And um, yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> One night stands. What are your thoughts? What are my thoughts on them? Mm-hmm. Like, do you like them? Have you done them? Will you do you entertain them? Are you more of like a relationship type of person? Mm-hmm. Now I feel like I'm looking for more like a relationship, right? But it's more I've, substance. Yeah, I've had one night stands and stuff, but being not drinking and like it takes me out of a lot of that because I'm like kind of antisocial. Mm. So I don't like I was telling you I don't go out as much, and so I don't know. I haven't had a one night stand in a long time. I can't even think. But what about a wild sex story? Do you have any of those? wild sex story you don't seem like a wild sex story man i don't think i have one really i'm like a vanilla emma do you only do missionary no i mean i've done other stuff right (laughs) but uh it's like tell me you love me look at me in my eyes it's the only way i can get off (laughs) (laughs) did Uh, i just read you do you feel seen no no no, no. (laughs) no i say other things but um yeah, I don't know. I'm what about your porn search history? If we were to look at your computer right now, what would we find? What are you looking up on Pornhub? A lot of blonde stuff. It sounds weird because you're blonde, so I didn't really. So you've say jerked that off to me. Blonde. I haven't. I promise. That's why you're looking. <laughs> looking. I have not. You're still looking but, me in the eye, so I believe that. Normally, you'd be like looking everywhere else and like, uh, but okay, okay. Yeah. So yeah. you like blondes with big boobs, because mm-hmm. obviously I'm blonde with big boot. I mean, big booty. So you would miss me. Yeah. 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 Have you dated anybody in the industry? Mm-hmm. How did that work out for you? Were they actively shooting or were you like had a, an agreement like you said that you know you kind of chose to either so, be with each other and you knew obviously knew what she did mm-hmm. um how was that for you i have like a weird thing with uh, sex action stars is what i like to call them okay i so, never heard that i like that it's nice right sex action star all right so when i was um in seventh grade i was going to school with this girl and uh we were like buddy buddy right and kind of dated a little bit like seventh grade you like hold hands that's mm-hmm. like how you dated 
So then, like, fast forward. You make fun then, of them and then hold your hand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so fast forward to high school, and um, I started talking to her again a little bit, and then we kind of stopped talking again. And then I heard she was in the industry, like, maybe 2012. So then, I don't know, we were just friends. You know, it always starts like that. You're just friends, right? Yeah. And she's, That's she's how doing things start thing. with you. You like friends or friends of friends. But I didn't even think of it like that, right? Okay. I just thought, oh, she's, like, getting popular in the industry. It's cool. Like, I always found that, like, fighters and porn stars or sex action stars they have something similar because you both kind of lose use your bodies and there's like there's something similar We're sexual athletes is what i like to say they're both pr- like primal things like sex is mm-hmm. very primal fighting is very primal and they're and they're they're kind of connected in some way so i always like yeah i always no problem with yeah. this so why did why did things end was it just because it didn't it wasn't compatible or was it because of the industry no i think um me and her like i just think it we just grew apart a little bit she got into different things i started getting into things and uh i just think it was bad communication you know when i look back at it yeah. <clears throat> but um yeah yeah sexting or facetime which would you prefer with your partner are you more into like verbal or are you more visual probably like facetiming yeah. facetime yeah. makes you feel like you're really there yeah would you ever attend a swingers party I probably would have when I was younger, but I don't think now. Okay. Like, I'm not not even just to spectate, just to see what it's about? I feel like I would get approached by a lot of couples. And like, okay. Like, they always want me to, like, have sex with their wife and something. Like, Is that something that's been approached to you before? It happens a lot in Vegas to me. It's like a thing. I can see that. Because, yeah. yeah, there's, I mean, it's a fetish. Guys like to be a cuckold. Yeah. And guys will come up to me and ask. That's what I'm saying. That's their fetish. So, usually, yeah. there's, for them to get their wife be, like, fuck, but they want to watch. So, yeah, I just... Have you ever uh, agreed to any of those things? No. no so you never fucked a man's wife while he watched? No. Would you? No. Do you think that you'd have performance anxiety? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. you're just like a one-on-one situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on virtual reality sex? Then now with all like the technology, they have like the whole Oculus thing. Was that mm-hmm. something that is up your alley? Are you a gamer type thing? Do you think it's just too totally far-fetched and it's just crazy? Um, like, what do you mean? Like, just to use myself to yes. experiment? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little much. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm going to just, you know, masturbate, it's just going to happen. You're going to go on your phone and yeah. look it up? Yeah. But um, I actually, growing up, I watched a lot of porn. I was, like, obsessed with it as a kid. And then now I try to, like, stay away from it because it's, like, I really do see what you feed your mind, mm-hmm. like, grow. So I'm not trying to, like, be like a sex fiend all the time and really like thinking about that a lot yeah but um yeah still once in a while i think it's one of those things i don't think that mm. again when you evolve with age it's like you it's like a dessert you don't want to yeah. eat too many desserts like you but you still have to have knowledge in it you still have to be you know you're well versed in it i yeah, feel like because yeah. it is part of life and i feel like you know even though you can't and you can overindulge i feel like mm. we still need to indulge to yeah. keep it yeah keep it going you know yeah when you did watch porn, did you watch it solo or with the partner? Uh, solo. Solo. Yeah. Never watched it with a partner? I think when I was really young, I did. Like, it was, like, fun to do. When okay. I was, like, in my 20s, maybe, like, 20 or All right. 21. But, um, yeah. I'm, so, I have kind of a crazy story. Love it. So, how it all started for me and kind of being involved and kind of, like, talking to a lot of girls in the industry and just being familiar with them... So was there more than one girl you dated in the industry? Um, I think there was maybe a couple. Okay. Yeah. But so when I was 19, I had a bunch of my friends from high school and they would come up to LA and we would like train and spend the weekend. And when I first moved to LA, I moved in with this girl. Her name is Randy Wright. Okay. I know, I know the name. Yeah. I know the name. So she's really a nice girl. And we were like on this like brother, sister, like right off the bat. Okay. So we would lie and tell people like we're a legit brother and sister because she has like black hair. I have black hair. So I don't know. seemed like it went together. Okay. So, um, yeah, those were like fun times. Were you like the wingman for her or was it like? Yeah. Okay. Because I was like. I was like like the brother. So like she would date like these crazy Russian guys or crazy guys. And she'd be like, if you tell this guy to leave and kick him out of our place, then I'll pay for rent this month. Mm. So she just had all kinds of money. And I was going to school at the time and I was fighting. And I was just like, wow, this is like the life. Makes sense. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, I kind of almost like looked up to girls like her and then she had all these friends that were like famous i don't want to start dropping names but she had all these famous friends that were in the industry so i was just kind of like wow this is cool i was 19 nice, nice. so i'm like 
you're like a little kid in a candy store yeah. but like soaking it all in so it's like i think it's i mean i think that when people speak on you know something that it's like it seems so taboo like oh to have friends but it's like we're just people too you know yeah. they say there's a lot of similarities in either how you train or you do things mm -hmm. or your interest and things like that where it's like oh, it's not really that not common yeah. especially being in la or vegas I mean, the, the, yeah. the suit that has. for sure for sure okay let's see I'm, I'm taking it easy on you you should be happy oh thank you um weird question but i feel like you know have you done anything crazy and participated in an orgy no have you ever had a threesome have i yeah when i was like really young but so that was like the most number of people that was like the follow-up because orgy is like at least more than four so yeah no yeah wild too wild for you not too wild. just just never never you know. came into never came across a, a room full of women that were like hey yeah, let's was, go so Keith. like <laughs> at my apartment one time me and my friends came home and i was supposed to be gone for the weekend and she was shooting a one guy and ten girl orgy so i came home i just see all these naked it's reverse girls. gangbang yeah and this one guy and i was being 19 i was You're just like, like lucky him what you know <laughs> it was crazy so that was kind of like you go my, in your room and masturbate no, like they were there all day. It was in a, it was a small place, so I just me and my friends just like stood around like weirdos and just. Gawked. Did anybody become a fluffer? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> Your friends like, man, you live in this all the time. Because yeah. that thing is, people typically yeah. think like this happens, and you're, you're like, like Bro, actually yeah. not. Yeah, but, okay. it never. It only happened one time. But <laughs> those guys think like I'm just like the coolest person from that one in interaction. I like it. All right, we're going to get to my game, Truth with Texas. We're going to ask you a spicy question. Ooh. Do you like dirty talk? Yeah. What is the craziest place you've had sex? Craziest place? Um, on a train here in LA? Okay. Okay. Or, were you in business them? class? Or, you know, a little, like, it was just. <laughs> no, I was, like, really late. And I was, yeah. Okay. Okay, I like when you get you know intimidated by things. You start to stop. You really start to know, talk really low, like, "Oh my God, who's doing this?" <laughs> I almost feel like I'm incriminating myself because I'm like, "I don't." Think Sean's learning a lot of things about you. He probably already knows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Have you ever had anybody throw up on you during sex? No, thank God. Have, I okay. I have had like a crazy squirter. I'm okay, not, not as into the squirting thing from it's sex messy. or from like sex foreplay just sex yeah okay yeah so it made a huge mess and you were mad i wasn't mad i was just like drenched i mean someone has to clean it up that's how i'd be mad i'm like it's like when you're in the hotel you could do things like that but yeah. like in your own personal in, in, space like my yeah. bed and stuff my whole you bed. have to get a whole tarp and a whole thing you know there's no warning either you know <laughs> she didn't tell like, you she just let it rip no yeah yeah that just means you were good at your job maybe <laughs> I'll take it. You're right. I was doing go. such there a good go. job. Is do you have everywhere. a celebrity hall pass? Is there someone that you just, if you could get any chance, any point in your life, if this person came into your DMs or called you up, told a friend told you they want to, who would this hall pass be? Uh, Megan Fox. Okay, yeah. that's a good one. Naughty questions. Lube or spit? Lube. Paid for sex. Paid for sex. <laughs> what do you mean have you paid for sex oh, paid for sex yeah not pay-per-view yeah no, you're like what is that? i got in like a happy ending massage before okay that counts have you ever faked an orgasm yeah why um to get out of the situation so did you like actually go full-blown like whatever or you just stopped doing it and you're like oh yeah i came or were you fully into the commitment and you're just like ah whatever you do and you <laughs> uh because I, I personally, until like a year or two, probably two years now, never knew that men did that. Yeah. And then yeah. I had a question, did men do this with me or did it just happen or whatever? Like, you know, see, what happened? I think I like pulled out and acted like I came. I was like, ah. Oh. So you, you were a big actor. Did a little fake, yeah. Actor, okay. Maybe you should have a you know, I think she knew too. Acting. I think she knew because she was real quiet after. Oh, that's like, more embarrassing. Yeah, She's <laughs> I wasn't that good, so. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't go into acting then. Yeah, no. <laughs> Are you part of the Mile High Club? No. Would you want to be? Yeah, that would be cool, right? It would be cool to be on like a private jet, not like economy on Southwest, you know? That's what might happen. <laughs> <laughs> it was a night flight, but yeah, it was. Okay. Wait, was it Southwest economy? It was. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, there's only one 
section in Southwest. It's economy. Everyone's yeah, economy. I know. There's not any other. Difference. You're right. You're right. <laughs> it was in the back of the bus too. Yeah. Yes. Night flights. Yeah, a lot of things could go down. It is a, such a small area. Yeah, but you like pick the seat up and then you go like spoon, and then that person spoons you, and then you have a blanket over you. A lot you, of things can happen. Yeah, you you have it all worked out. I did at the time. <laughs> I mean, it was many moons ago, but you know, it was a fun time. It was yeah. at least ten years ago. Oh, sure. okay. Biggest turn off. What is something that someone can do just completely turn you off that you're just over it? Um, I already said the eating with their mouth open. And More all that. sexual. Sexual, but yeah. just turn off. Uh, maybe just like bad BO kind of. Okay, like, hygiene. Yeah, hygiene. All right, romantic questions. Making out or cuddling? Making out. Okay, mm -hmm. cut or uncut? Cut. Sex life, if it was a title of a song, what would yours be? My life be like, ooh. Uh, they, like I like that. Yeah. Dinner or movie date? Uh, dinner. Sex on the first date? No. Okay. Why do you act like I'm supposed to know? No. No, I just like <laughs> sex on the first. I just think it's. You're thinking about it? It's not going to, like, I'm at the point I'm at now. Like, it may It's not going to progress to anything. Yeah, so, just, yeah. You're going to hold out. But so, I mean, how many dates? Or I mean, do you have a rule? Is it just based off like? I used to do this like if I really liked a girl, I'd be like, I'm gonna wait a month and just primer for a month. You know, okay. Go on some dates and talk and, you know, maybe a little kiss here, hug this and that, and just a lot of flirting because I think a month is a good amount of time to like, six weeks a month. But what if you do all that and you're really invested and then, sex is horrible. I don't think it's ever happened like that. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. But I mean, yeah, it's possible. It's possible. But I mean, you gotta. Put in a little effort, right? True. Yeah. True. Yeah. Lights on or lights off? On. Naked or lingerie? Do you like your woman to dress up for you or does it not matter? Lingerie is nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Favorite place to be kissed? Mm, just like my neck, I guess. Okay. Yeah, I feel weird saying that. I don't know why. Why? That's if that's what it is. That's what it is. It's okay. <laughs> it's a safe space here at Private okay. Talk. <laughs> Kinky questions. Do you have any fetishes, Mr. Vanilla? What is your Do I fetish? Have any fetishes? Um, I kind of like choking and like slapping a little bit. Okay, and, so like, like light bondage, like BDSM yeah, stuff. Yeah, a little like a little like dirty talk. Okay. Mm -hmm. Called someone the wrong name during sex. Not during sex, but yeah, no. Okay. So. Most number of times you've had sex in one day? Um, I don't know. Maybe like 10 times or something. Okay. That's way more than I thought you were going to say. Okay. Yeah. okay. Well, I had this one girl that was just like... All the nympho, time. yeah. Okay. Well, it wasn't all the time. Was, was she like, in the industry? One no, of the, no, no. No? Okay. Normal. I found she's that... She's just normal. We're all normal. Yeah. <laughs> no. Sometimes girls that are in the industry, they're not as sexual outside. Very true. You know, because... Well, because uh, you work, and so yeah. it's like you have to either maybe you're working the day before, or mm. like you need more than just like oh let's fuck. You need a yeah. little bit more romancing, you know? Yeah, yeah. Favorite time of day to have sex? Before bed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Last question: What is a sex skill that you are most proud of? Do you have any? A sex skill that I'm most proud of. I don't know if I have one. Well, you said you made a girl squirt. So Ian, there's one. Yeah. I helped you out. That is cheating. Okay. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's cheating. Yeah. Okay. I have to ask you one more because that's cheating. We can't end like that. Okay. Shower sex or car sex? Car. Car. Shower is like, isn't it it's like... too wet, slippery? I don't know. It like, I don't know. It fucks. I don't know. It's like you, sometimes you get too hot and like it can't come. It's like you're getting almost hot. Mm. It's like you just need a bigger shower. No. Yeah. Yeah. Food for thought. All right, that is the rest okay. of Truth with Texas. It wasn't so bad. I took it easy oh, on you. You know, I you. tried just the tip and not all penetration. You know, thank I didn't want to scare you away too much. Yeah. Is there anything you want to ask Miss Texas before you leave? Um, how many of these have you done? This is. Um, we're on season four. We're in, oh. I think, like at least 150 episodes or oh, so. Shit. Um, yeah, I have a lot of fun doing it i get nice. to meet awesome people like yourself mm -hmm. from all different walks of life yeah, um yeah. i appreciate you coming and 
taking the time. I know that you didn't really know what you were walking into. Yeah, so I didn't know what just was to have the balls and the courage to come and talk to me yeah. about all the things and being open, I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, you know, the whole premise of my show is, you know, private talk. It's like we don't know each other, but we get to know each other a little bit more and also have your fans know things that probably would have never asked before. People wouldn't have asked you. So yeah. it's lighthearted, fun, and, you know, it's always a good time with Miss Texas. Yeah, thank you. Yes. So yeah. please let us know where we can follow you, support everything you have going on. Um, probably just my Instagram and my Twitter. I'm on Twitter a lot more. It's at KOKid951. Okay. That's my Twitter. It's the same thing for my Instagram. So it's at KOKid951. Awesome. 951 is where I grew up, and KOKid is, like, my fight nickname. Now I'm the NFT kid. The KO kid. Yeah. Okay. Knockout All right. kid. All right. Well, thank you so much again for coming and sharing thank your you. story with us. Private talk until we meet again. This episode is sponsored by Bet Online.